Research estimates that we are living in the presence of about 80,000 different toxic chemicals. We are literally surrounded by them, from the air that we breathe to the water that we drink, from the hygiene products that we use to the clothes that we wear, from the carpets that we walk on to the beds that we sleep in, these things are everywhere. And though many people have heard something about this, the extent of the damage that these substances cause to our health and our environment is not something that's fully appreciated. This week, I got to sit down with natural living pioneer and best-selling author Dr. Eric Zielinski to talk about some of the most common contributors to chronic health problems and simple strategies for eliminating inflammation and boosting your overall health. Let's get into this. So inflammation is like a buzzword today. Everybody's talking about it from all different walks of life and all different medical backgrounds. What's one thing that everyone seems to be getting wrong nowadays when it comes to inflammatory influences on their life? Oh, I love this. And let me, don't, don't hang up the phone when I say this doc. Um, inflammation is good for you. Let's remember what inflammation is. Inflammation is a healing process. So when you cut yourself with a knife and then blood shunts, there's pain, there's swelling, there's redness, there's, there's all the healing mechanisms to bring restoration to the body. The problem is what happens if you cut yourself over and over and over and over and over again? That's essentially what we're doing with chronic inflammation. But just so you know, acute inflammation is life-saving. That's what keeps us alive. The problem, and this is the problem. The problem is we're not differentiating it. We're, we're just saying inflammation is bad. Well, okay, if inflammation's bad, then bad and pain is a life-saving mechanism. Otherwise, you're gonna burn your hand if it's over a fire. You need to know that that's not good. Remove the hand or your hand will burn, right? It's just, it's so common sense, but but all together, and we say, okay, well, this is a physiological response. We need to manufacturer and go against, then you start to think of like, okay, what is a good fever versus a bad fever, right? What is good pain versus bad pain? Um, what we need to focus on, and I know this is what you specialize in, is helping people rid themselves of chronic inflammation, of chronic pain, of chronic stressors. Now, that's really what this boils down to is long standing damage that is done to the body. Now, again, inflammatory Inflammatory foods, inflammatory body care, inflammatory exposure to things over a long period of time will wear down our body, will ultimately kill us prematurely. But just big picture, big picture, I'm not afraid of inflammation. I'm not afraid of a fever. I'm not afraid of pain. I look at those things as a warning sign to what's really happening overall. But the real danger is this low-grade inflammation just that makes you chronically unwell not really enough to go to the doctor, maybe enough to go to the uh, pharmacy for something, but not enough to really make you think you have to change your life. Like that's the dangerous part of this low grade inflammation. And that's what I want to bring to the table here today. I'm sure you've talked and I know you do. There are certain foods that people need to avoid. Yet what about the other things that we do on a regular basis that is giving us this chronic low-grade inflammatory response? Like what's your laundry detergent? Like what is on your skin all day long? Women, ladies, I'm talking to you specifically. What are you putting on your face, on your lips, under your eyes, right? In your hair, when it comes to your, your body care, your makeup, your cosmetics, most women invariably are doing wonderful things to beautify themselves. And I, I challenge, I, I champion women, right? My wife's a beauty pageant, right? You're a winner. Like she's Mrs. Georgia, 2019. I, I love the fact that women take care of themselves, the self-love, the self-empowerment. It's wonderful, but at what cost? And that's something that we got to recognize is most women walk out of their door, a living, breathing science experiment with hundreds of chemicals exposing themselves to through the perfumes that they wear, the body care, the cleaning, all that stuff. At what risk though? And this is the thing that people don't recognize is after years of exposure, this low grade chronic inflammatory response to these neurotoxins and inflammatory triggers ultimately lead to a world of health issues, chronic fatigue, chronic pain, Alzheimer's, dementia, autoimmunity, cancer. And so we take a step back. And so inflammation as a whole is a good thing to me. 
It's a warning sign that something's wrong. Low-grade information is the most dangerous thing because it's relatively undetectable by most people. Mm -hmm. And so being aware of your body and also more importantly, being aware of what you're doing to your body is even more important. So I want to challenge everyone to walk through us in this journey and have an open mind to the things that we're talking about because we're going to challenge the status quo. And let me just say flat out, just because something's at the grocery store or at your favorite big box store and being sold on a shelf doesn't mean it's safe. And that is the biggest misnomer that I've heard from people over the years as well. If it's at the store, it's had to be approved by who? You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. And when it comes to the supplement industry, that's the wild, wild west. Anyone can slap any label on any bottle and put it up on Amazon or put it up at your store or wherever. No one's monitoring this stuff. No one's doing randomized control trials for 15, 20 years on your laundry soap and your hand sanitizer for crying out loud. That's why it was a big stink back in America a couple of years ago. Remember remember when the 2020 health crisis and everyone and their mother is buying out hand sanitizer and the FDA says, hey, guess what? These 200 brands are toxic, don't use anymore. What about the last 15 years that we've been using that stuff? Why is it now toxic in your out in your outlawing this stuff? Like, why are you now recalling it? Yeah, well, you brought so, so many good things there. It's like the difference between inflammation for me, I'm, I'm kind of working on this thought experiment right now, is it, it all comes down to what's the cause of it. If, mm -hmm. it's, if it's caused by like, hey, I, I tripped and I skinned my knee, well then, yeah, I want that inflammation there. Not having it, as you said, is potentially life-threatening. But if it's this death from a thousand cuts situation that you're yes, referring to, yes. where we're actively doing things every single day that are introducing little bits of inflammation into our body and we're paying money for it. And the tragic thing for me, Dr. Zelinsky, is that most people are completely unaware that they're even introducing these things into their bodies, or they might even be unaware that just because you put something on your skin, they don't know that it actually ends up in your bloodstream. Exactly. Exactly. And I, and as a chiropractor in my background and you're practicing, you know, more than anybody, what's worse, a traumatic injury or microtrauma. And so when it comes to posture, you know, most docs I talk to would rather they see better results from someone who had great health before, and then they had whiplash. It's easier to get those people on back on fighting weight, so to speak, and getting them in health versus someone who has chronic micro trauma because of their poor posture. And they just are not realizing that they're wearing down their joints over time, over year. So the same concept, I love where you said death by a thousand cuts. And so what we're trying to do is open up Pandora's box, realize that we are inundated by an onslaught of chemicals. I mean, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agencies, we're gone on record beyond number of times on their website, look it up. The air quality in your home is two to five times more polluted than outside. Yes. Just, just unless you're in New York City or, or LA in horrible fog or smog season, barring that. How and why is because of all the different dangerous, and let me clarify, dangerous VOCs, volatile organic compounds coming from your carpets and your cleaning products and, and your paint materials and everything. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, what is a volatile organic compound? I can go into this a little bit, but I, if you have any questions, let me know because this is where the essential oil piece comes out and I'll, I'll, I'll lecture for an hour. Yeah, well, let's, let's talk yeah. about like, just give us an overview of like, what, like, I, I, I went into it off the bat of like, what's the one thing that everybody's doing wrong? But I think obviously there's, there's more than one thing. There's a lot of things no. in our home that we're exposed to. So let's go through kind of like, what are the different sources of toxins? You mentioned personal mm -hmm. care products. You mentioned uh, the home just now and air quality. Let's, let's start with the home and just kind of, you know, uh, I think a lot of people know about the, the hazards in carpets or the, the padding mm -hmm. that they put under carpets that has known carcinogens. Um, things like that. What else is inside of the home that's problematic and, and what's in there? Yeah. And what exactly is in those products that are bad? It's the, they are the volatile organic compounds that are being emitted from those products. So volatile meaning readily evaporated at room temperature, organic meaning carbon-based, compound meaning there's a variety of different chemicals. So it's not like hydrogen, right? It's a variety of different elements. 
VOC. So if you smell something, that's an indication that it's volatile, right? Um, sometimes, and this is the dangerous things about a lot of things, you can't detect it by smell. And, and taking it maybe even a step back to our, our primal roots, what most people don't know and most people aren't taught in, in basic biology in high school, which is dangerous because we need to understand our senses, is the, the sense of smell is the only sense that's hardwired to the brain. There's no interpretation of any sensation from the nose to the brain. It's direct response. Interpretation meaning there's a thalamic relay response when you... So go back to the last time you hurt yourself accidentally, right? You stubbed your toe, you cut your finger. The, the, I have six children. I've seen this with my babies. Babies, when's the last time you've seen a baby fall? And then one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. It takes like five seconds for the baby to cry. It's because their, their pain pathway is being developed and it's slower than the adult, but it's not immediate. Pain isn't immediate because it has to be interpreted. The sensation has to be interpreted by the brain. And oh, that's pain. There is none of that with smell. So when you smell, inhale something through the olfactory system, you automatically trigger a response into the brain, the limbic system specifically, which is your, your, your mood, your memory, emotions. It's the first part of the brain that develops in the fetus. It's like your primal brain. It's really what connects us to the primates. And we need to understand the significance of smell. And but before two, 300 years ago, we relied on smell heavily, heavily for our own safety and protection. Sure. One of the most dangerous things, and this is why I'm, I'm sharing this, is we should be in, okay, here's, okay, let me, this blew my mind when I experienced this. I have zero tolerance at the cleaning aisle, at the grocery store, like zero. I, if I'm in the cleaning aisle, which I won't, I literally will hold my breath to walk by it, or there's nothing in there for me, ever, nothing, because we'll make our own. And we can't find anything at the conventional one. My natural health food store, all day long. But at Walmart, Kroger, big box stores, wherever you live, doesn't matter. If you don't have some sort of noxious response, that's a red flag that your sense of smell has been dampened, dampened to the point where you're not even recognizing the dangers. There should be headaches. There should be nausea. There should be drainage of the nose. You should feel because it's so toxic. Mm -hmm. It's these chemicals are being emitted. You literally can taste it. Yes. The problem is most people have dampened that smell. And so that, that survival mechanism is gone yeah. for most people, or it's, it's, it's dampened to the point where it's dormant. But let me encourage you with this. You could revitalize that just like how you can revitalize your sensation, your taste buds. Like if you were to refrain from eating sugar for the next month. Yeah you'd be so intolerant. Like you literally couldn't stomach a Coca-Cola. It would make you vomit. Like so the, that's the how- of the, of the stimulus resensitizes the- Yes. Yes, the sensory organ. And that's the danger we have in our home. I'm saying that because I am 100% in intolerant to any artificial fragrance and candles and wallflowers, yep. perfumes. It's, it automatically will give us, me and my, my wife and kids, headaches, nausea, again, no, nasal drainage. Ugh. Yeah. And I want you to have that because you'll know you will be a living, breathing. Um, I'm thinking back and you know, the coal miners used to have their like birds that they put in the coal to make sure it's safety. Like, we like need to be that bird crying. It's not safe. We need to be that sensitive to this stuff. And so- if you're not, I want to encourage you, that's a red flag. That's similar to like a diabetic who can't feel their feet and there's sores being developed because they've grown numb and that's dangerous. You want sensation of pain. You want sensation of intolerance. So going back to the inside products that are, that are wreaking havoc on us, number one is artificial fragrances and they're in everything. Like literally Anything that has any kind of, of, of flavor or aroma, artificial fragrances are the primary key. And essentially what it is, it's a fake version of this essential oil. 
And, and we see, we know from science, you know, God designed the plant with volatile organic compounds that are life-giving, like the real VOCs. Like, so when you put your nose into a rose, what do you think you're smelling? You're smelling the volatile organic compound from the rose, which is 100% life-giving, does a number of physiological benefits to the brain, the body, the soul, the spirit. It's unbelievable. But when you tap into this and chemically manufacture this, the body's like, it's like trying to open, it's like trying to open a door with a different key. Like the key could fit in the hole, but it can't turn. That's essentially what happens. It's like this lock and key mechanism that we have in the neural pathways and the, the mechanical receptors. It doesn't open up the door and it's like, it creates a stimuli. And, and so whether it's any kind of chemical and the body to really kind of le level this to a basic understanding of immunology, the body doesn't care if it's a virus, a bacteria, a fungi, a phthalate, a, pal a paraben, an artificial fragrance, uh, sugar, it doesn't care what it is. I mean, white processed sugar, if it's not natural and the body doesn't have a direct way of metabolizing it, it looks at it as a threat. Mm -hmm. And so it stimulates the immune response sure. and that ultimately will trigger inflammation. Sure. And if we're exposing ourselves to constant smells all day long through our wallflowers or plugins or poo-poo sprays, our body care or cleaning products, what we put on the dog, what we put on the kids, God help us everywhere. We're constantly in this low-grade inflammatory mode. Mm -hmm. And artificial fragrances are have been directly linked to Alzheimer's, dementia. And of course, you would think allergies, ADHD, learning disabilities, and you name it. We're even seeing it get down to the point where it really wears down the mitochondrial function to chronic fatigue and, sure. and fibromyalgia. And just the list goes on and on. Well, so how that's can number it not? One. So we're if we take the example of somebody who's in uh, a severe immune response because they have a cold or a flu, everybody's been there and had this experience where they're super low energy. So they need to understand that the reason that that's happening is because your immune system is under attack, like you just explained, and your body is taking as many resources as it can from all those under all those other systems to use it to mount the immune response to keep you alive, which means you're gonna be lethargic, you're gonna be fatigued, you're gonna be low energy, you're gonna be weaker, your brain is gonna work uh, less clearly and more slowly. All of those things are gonna happen. But what you're saying here is, with this death by a thousand cuts model, if you are introducing these fragrances all the time, it's like having a low grade flu all of the time and your immune system is just constantly stealing those resources. And, and we've been so desensitized to it over the years that you just don't recognize it. But I'll, I'll bet if you remember maybe 15, 20 years ago when, when gas stations and public restrooms first started to introduce the spray, right? The, the perfume spray oh, stuff. That, in the corner of the room. Right? Yeah. I remember the first time is like, ah, I could taste it and I didn't like it. Yes. This was even before I was even health conscious. I remember that. Like, eh, it's a lot strong. Now people don't give twice a thought. Yeah. Um, it's just because we become desensitized to it in a way where ultimately here's the thing. That's a gift from God too. Like I'm not feeling my clothes right now. If I were to feel my clothes right now, I would be crazy. I would literally be like this all the time, right? Like our, our sense of touch, our sense of taste, our sense of smell, we're supposed to adapt to its environment. So that's essentially what this is. It's adaptive, it's added, it's adaptive immunity and its adaptive response to stimuli. So if we're constantly exposing ourselves to noxious stimuli, we're going to adapt to it. Mm -hmm. And it's just the body essentially giving up, which would is helpful because it would make us literally go nuts if yeah. we were to do it. But the problem is it's dangerous long-term. And so I really want to encourage people just to give this thought and start, start small. And if there's anywhere you could start, it is with one of these little very cost-effective budget-friendly diffusers and you could go on Amazon or your local health food store, go to Whole Foods. I don't care any health food store, or any even, even Walmart and all the big box stores have this stuff now. Get an ultrasonic water diffuser. Ultrasonic meaning there's a disc on the bottom of this thing that vibrates so much it breaks up the compounds of the water and the essential oil so that it diffuses into the air. Because again, you're getting the VOCs, VOCs through mist. And then you get a high quality essential oil, you put anywhere between three, five, six drops in, depending on what you're trying to do. And here's a cool thing. You can literally create the environment that you want with these essential oils. So if you want a calm, soporific, chilled out atmosphere at night, 
put some lavender, some roaming chamomile, vetiver, something like that. It's, it's working directly to stimulate the parasympathetic rest and digest response. It's awesome. What In the, the morning. What were the three? Yeah. Same again. Just oh, lavender. Um, lavender, lavender, vetiver, roaming chamomile. Um, there are a number of calming sedative oils, but those are ones that stand out. If you want something like to help you focus like midday, um, let's say you're trying to, you know, get grounded, rooted, maybe you're just rattled. Like maybe something just really shook you where oh, bad news, something, I don't know, right? You looked at your bank statement. OMG, what did I do last month? I don't know. But maybe you want, like, you want to be grounded. Like you want to just, you don't want to be like asleep. So maybe lavender for me in the midday isn't my best friend because I'm so sensitive to this stuff. Like I, I save lavender usually for night, but if I want to go down a notch, get a little grounded, great for if you're doing exercises or meditation, prayer, um, steady, work from home. The the tree oils, like um, the resin oils, like frankincense, many people have heard of, myrrh, um, cedar wood, um, sandalwood. These oils traditionally are very calming and it's a nice balance. So you're, it's not going to jack you up like a peppermint, which I'll explain in a minute, but it's not going to get you so low where it might cause you to fall asleep. So this, you know, a strategy and we've seen an oil, um, like in the cedarwood world, helping children with ADHD, helping people focus for clarity and mental capacity, which is great. Like who couldn't benefit from their distractions? Um, a morning blend that we like to use a lot is a mixture of orange and peppermint. And pepper and orange is is by the way, if you are going to get an essential oil, and I don't want this unless you want it to be a complete essential oil class because we can go. I've written three books on this stuff. It's unbelievable. Thousands of research studies, right? Orange is, in my opinion, the MVP that everyone needs to get because it's the 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 cheapest, like in the in a good way. It's the most cost-effective oil. You can get a bottle like this for like 10 bucks because orange grow in abundance and, and, and it's easy to extract the oil. Um, but it's wonderfully effective. One of the best for um, anti-inflammatory properties because it's rich in D-limonene, which I'm sure you're familiar with that chemical, natural chemical in plants, great anti-inflammatory response, a cancer killing response with that D-limonene. But essential oil of orange has a wonderful mood boosting effect as well. And it can help with depression and anxiety and other just mood disorders. And so we like to balance that in the morning. Like imagine you wake up with a shot of joy. We like to balance orange with peppermint. And peppermint, you know, when's the last time you had maybe a peppermint mint or a whatever, any sort of candy or, or anything with a peppermint flavor, it perks you up. And natural peppermint from essential oil increases VO2 max. It's been shown to increase athletic performance in college athletes in randomized control trials. And it does a lot of great things because it perks you up, it gives you a little more energy. And when you use it with orange, it's a wonderful smell. But you see, that's our morning blend. And we have an afternoon blend and a nighttime blend. And my wife and I have a love blend and the kids have a whatever blend. So that's the fun thing about this is, is you find things that work for you. But ultimately, what did we just do? We just kicked our wallflowers and plugins out the door. We don't have candles in my house unless they're 100% organic, fragranced with essential oils. And we make our own potty spray stuff that everyone wants based off of this. And the cool thing is we save a ton of money because mm. these are pennies on the dollar. And when you make your own, super, super simple to do. Just, I mean, just, I don't have, like I have one of those spray bottles right there. Just a little bit of water. You can put a little bit of water, a little bit of witch hazel. Again, we got the recipes on my website and my books, but super simple, super, super simple and straightforward to do. Um, and that's just the the, the strategy here is to stop the constant onslaught of smell. And you got these you know wonderfully effective marketing companies that sell toxic fragrances. That's all they sell. And they make a boatload of money. And yeah. we were very much into that. You know, my wife and I, before we were enlightened to this truth that we I've shared with y'all. So we, I bought my wife all the fun stuff. You know, the Christmassy stuff and this and every season of the world. My wife had plugins and wallflowers in every room, the baby's nursery. We wondered why the baby was having allergies and sneezing a lot and stuff. Well, we're poisoning our kid, not yeah. really knowing it, trying to create a healthy or not even healthy, trying to create a happy, nice smelling environment. That's so, and that's so, so interesting. Yeah. There's so many people Isn't it? go through life with 
uh, chronic sneezes, chronic allergies, uh, post nasal drip is one that drives me nuts because people are, they accept that their body has some kind of a dysfunction where they're just constantly dripping mucus down their throat with, again, that lack of understanding that these things that are coming into the body are triggering an immune response, which ramps up that exact type of mucus production. So what you're talking about here is essentially almost like a, uh, an elimination diet where you're removing all the potential toxins and what period of time would people have to remove them for in order to start resensitizing their olfactory system or their sense of smell? Yeah, it's within days. And I like how you word that. This is an elimination lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And you go one by one by one by one. And, and a big part of this is getting outside. Yeah. A big part of this is wherever you live, making it a daily habit to be outside and to breathe fresh air. And in my last book, I talked a lot about forest bathing in, yeah. in Japanese, known as Shinrin Yoku. Yeah. It's essentially just enjoying aromatherapy in forest, but it's just not the smell. It's the touch of the leaves and the feeling of the grass going through your feet and the, the look, the sight of sunlight shining through the leaves and all the beautiful sounds that you hear and all the experience, like whether you're a Christian and you believe in this creation model or an evolutionist that feels we've been evolving in for billions of years, we all can agree on this. We, our ancestors spent most of their time outside, like, and in the inside time was virtually outside because they didn't have air proof and soundproof walls, right? So they were outside all the time up until like two, 300 years ago. So we adapted, we've evolved outside. We're made to be outside. We've, uh, we thrive outside. So there's one thing we need to do in this, you know, elimination lifestyle is to bring outside in. And, and you know, what I have behind me isn't just for video beauty. Like we want plants. We, I, I want to see plants. I want to touch plants. I want, I want plants to be part of our lifestyle. I want to smell the plants. So essentially what essential oils can help do is bring in the healthy VOCs that you're smelling in nature inside. That's and such a, think a of, cool way of putting it, Dr. Zielinski. I've never right? heard it presented that way, is that essential oils is a way of essentially getting outside more. You're bringing yeah. the outside in, like you said. That's that's such a, uh, it's a very interesting way of putting it. The forest bathing is fascinating. I've read some studies on that. Um, yeah. And and you're right that it's it's this, bathing is really the right word because it's an inundation of the senses. It's mm -hmm. the sights, it's the sounds, it's the smells, it's the touch, it's the the green. I've I've read that our body responds in a very specific way to green. And then I think there's the word for it is uh, fractals. Are you familiar with this? Yes. With yes. the patterns in nature that are irregular, but somehow have a very soothing effect on the brain and body. So uh, really interesting stuff there. But the idea that essential oils is a way of capturing that forest bathing and bringing it into your home is is absolutely fascinating so you can resensitize your olfactory system your sense of smell and start purging these things which is critically important because as you alluded to earlier in this conversation the the senses are what our way of connecting to the environment but they're also our way of our our body letting us know if something is is potentially harmful so here's yep. an example and you'll get a kick out of this uh one of the things that i love to do recreationally is to go surfing and I've noticed for years, because I'm highly sensitive to smells and I'm highly sensitive to taste, um, that if the surfer in front of me when we're paddling out has long hair, I can taste their conditioner in the water. Yep. They yep. leave literally a trail yep. and you can't see it, but you can taste it. If we both duck under a wave and they got there first, I can taste their conditioner. It's And it it's always grossed me out because I'm like, how do I get this stuff out of my body? Um, yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah. In Hawaii, if they haven't, last I heard a couple of years ago, and actually I got to look this up, um, they were going to outlaw um, sun tanning lotion on yeah. the beaches because it was it was annihilating the coral reef and creating so much pollution. And and I want to give people a litmus test because you asked a good question. Like you'll soon, quickly within days, notice a difference. But 
within anything, and this is something I want to encourage people as a whole, and disagree with me if you want. I would love to have a healthy disagreement if, if you disagree. But anything natural, any natural protocol, specifically something that incorporates the skin and incorporates um, smell, you got to give four weeks. Um, we are on a cycle. You know, your skin regenerates itself within 28 days. And, and as you know, when I was publishing research studies and writing my first couple of books over and over and over and over again, it hit me like all these studies, these trials typically land between four to six weeks. It, like, I wondered why, like, it's because you got to give your body enough time to respond to something. And we are constantly in this state of flux and adaptation. And it's also the recommendation to switch a protocol every four to six weeks. You don't want to be doing the same thing over and over and over because your body will adapt to it as well, even an, even an essential oil. So you'll find within a month, specifically, within four to six weeks, you should really see like a dramatic improvement. But within days, you can start to notice some things. But you'd be surprised. The body and a month isn't that long and women know more than anybody, the monthly cycle, but men need to realize too, we are on a circadian rhythm. We have a melatonin cycle as well. We have a hormone cycle as well. And it's typically about 28 to 30 ish days. So give yourself a month, especially when we talk about regenerating taste buds and olfactory nerves, because they will regenerate and they will respond relatively quick. And it's wonderful because here's the cool thing is once you develop the habit you'll hopefully never want to go back. It becomes habitual in a good way. Like a lot of us, quite frankly, were addicted to unhealthy smells and unhealthy foods and unhealthy things. You'll become so intolerant of that and you'll be addicted to the good stuff. You'll crave it. Yeah, yeah. you'll crave it and you'll want it. So yeah, it's, it's, that's it's a big really part interesting. of it. It's, it's like the person who's, who, who doesn't know what it's like to actually feel good. But I think a lot of people will be able to relate to what you're saying if we switch the sense from smell to taste. So anybody who's ever fasted before, even if you just fast for a day, how good does that first meal mm -hmm. taste? It's because those taste buds have had a 24 hour rest and man, that meal tastes good. Like I've had portobello tacos with all the sauteed bell peppers and fresh avocado. And you're just like, oh my God, this is the best bell pepper I've ever had in my life. You know, something that you might've breezed over in the past, all of a sudden really packs this this punch and your body's like, thank you. So if we switch that and we say, well, that's what's going to happen if you go on uh, a smell fast, then, then I think people can kind of jump on board with that. But I want to jump back to what you said a second ago, because that was absolutely wild. That the state of Hawaii recognizes that these sunscreens are absolutely toxic for the reef and the marine life, so much so that they're going to get to the point where they ban it. But human beings have this incredible ability to remove ourselves from nature and the natural order of things and say, oh, this is killing everything around us, but it's perfectly fine for us to spray on ourselves. It reminds me of this story that I heard years ago where family, uh, a, a neighbor called on, on the house next door because they were feeding their dogs potato chips and soda. And oh, so the animal protection the services dog, came yeah. and took the dog away from the family because they considered it animal abuse. But that family had five children. So you're like, what are they wow. feeding their kids? So it's like, wow. it's exactly what you're saying about that reef in Hawaii, where it's like, mm -hmm. it's not fine for the environment or for the animals in the environment, but humans, you guys keep doing it. It's, it's such a weird, you know, juxtaposition that, that we can separate ourselves from the natural world. And it's been absolutely devastating as near as I can tell. You know, the golden rule, love others as you love yourself, like how can you truly love others when you show yourself so much self-hatred by the things that you think about yourself and the things that you say and the things that you do. And quite frankly, a lot of it is ne neglect by design. It, it's a, it's a, I don't want to get too deep here unless you want to, but it's, it's a form of self-hatred. It's a form, it's a self-saboteur spirit where people like, I'll never forget. I'll never forget because I was a chain smoker. I was an alcoholic. I abused narcotics. Um, I was, I was a wreck before I had my, my spiritual awakening 20 years ago. And I'll never forget a moment when I was smoking a cigarette, knowing I had a headache because of the cigarette, because I just went on a bender and I just remembered, I don't care. Like, I don't care. This is just what I'm doing to myself, knowing 
I'm hurting myself. It was like this point of weakness that I couldn't even surrender myself to acknowledging the fact that I was in that, like a really, really dark place. Mm-hmm. And that was a season in my life that I really suffered with depression, anxiety, even contemplated taking my life. Wow. And, and it's like, if someone is knowingly doing something that they know is wrong and you know what, let me, if, I mean, if you're, a, if you're listening at this point, we got your hook, hook, line and sinker. Good. It, it's like we're preaching to the choir now. If you fast forward to this part, you're, I'm going to blow your mind with this. So please, you might want to rewind at the beginning. The biggest lie that I see in in our health space as a whole, and just in general, how people respond to this these different topics are all things in moderation. Um, what does that mean for someone like me? You know, all things in moderation. Okay, just a little bit of cocaine. J- just just a little bit of Vicodin with alcohol to make myself fall asleep, just a little bit of this, to, you know what I mean? Like I had to abstain and I abstain from those things that I know are bad for me. So let me clarify, just adding my one little word. The, the correct mindset is all good things in moderation. If something is bad, treat it like the plague. White sugar, eight times more addictive than cocaine. White sugar, it's been shown, clinically proven. You drink a soda, it will, like Dr. Yona explained, it will compromise your immune system for four to six hours. It's like you're shutting down your immune defense just to metabolize the poison that you just drank, let alone all the other chemicals that are coming at you. And you wonder why you're chronic fatigue. You wonder why you're in pain all the time. You wonder, you wonder. And it's like, if something is bad, this is how extreme... I am. And it's something where if, if you get a little bit of this, I think you're going to get it. If you are intolerant of things that are poisonous, completely intolerant, you will be empowered to such a level that you will know that what you're doing is truly life-giving. It's such a deep act of love to yourself and to other people to not tolerate anything wrong or anything hurtful, anything harmful. And it opens up a door where if you're truly willing to this elimination lifestyle, you start to think, wow, if this thing, if this person, if this job, if this idea of this, whatever isn't life-giving, then it has no part of my life. And and I want to encourage you though, like it, it, this is a black and white thing. Like if you know, drinking that, eating that, doing that isn't good for you, then you're hurting yourself on purpose. Yes. Yes. So that, that, that's it. That's absolutely clear cut. But what's on the flip side of that is really interesting because it means that with every one of those acts of self-sabotage, there's an opportunity to turn it into an act of self-promotion, self-love, self-enhancement, all all of those things. So each one of those is like a two-way street and you can, and and I think it's important to classify it as a two-way street. There's not a three-way street because the body doesn't really do good at staying in one place. You're either you're either uh, moving towards something better, or you're you're regressing to something less, you know, or or harming yourself into something less. But this this idea that we started off on on, the, on this people inadvertently harming themselves is, I think, where a lot of people find themselves in a in a lot of trouble. Granted, there's a lot of people who have um, self-sabotaging, uh, behaviors in there. But I I think a lot of times that also comes from people not understanding the degree of damage that these things cause. So it it was interesting what you said there about, you know, one Coca-Cola and then, and then you would have to amplify that out in your mind and say, well, what about the person who has a Coca-Cola every day with lunch? And you're just like, well, now multiply that by decades, you know? So, you know, Inherently, I'm I'm going to go on a whim, and I think most people realize the true danger. I, I I think they're not allowing themselves to see it. Like I, and this is something we've been doing for quite a while, and we hear it all the time. I know it's not good for me, but it's just once. I know it's not good for me, but what do you mean? You know it's not good for you? Like you know it's not good for you? Why? Your doctor says it. You read something. You heard it. But but but. Like that little butt, I, I, I'm going back to last night. I listened to an interview from, um, by Ben Affleck. And if you know Ben, it was, a, it was a Howard Stern, Ben Affleck interview. And Ben was talking about getting free. And he, 
he said he kind of like in the spirit, like he's, he kind of equated alcoholism, the food addiction to all kinds of different things like addictions, addiction, self-medicating through pleasure of one sort or another. A lot of people do it with food, smell, a lot of people do it through a lot of ways, sex. Right. And so Ben made a point is like, you know, you have to get to this point of just absolute torment where the, where change is the only thing that will stop. Otherwise you'll never truly change. Like you got to reach your own proverbial rock bottom where it's, it, it, you can't continue. You can't continue. And, and this might sound crazy. I mean, we're talking about toxins and body care, right? Do you want to live your utmost and healthy till an old age? I mean, do you want to be around for your grandkids? Do you want to be a statistic? Like look at the cancer and the Alzheimer's and the dementia and the heart disease and the rates. We're not getting better, y'all. Like this, this is literal life or death. I mean, this is premature death. And it's not only just premature death. This is robbing the youth of abundant life. This is people in their forties and fifties that are virtually done. They're, they're just getting through life and, and they, they are robbed of energy and let alone in the sixties and the seventies and the eighties. It's like, I, I see this, this is an assault against our livelihood, our lives, our families, our, our inheritance, our everything, our, our mission, our purpose. And it, it crazy as it sounds, because it does sound extreme to people, but you know, it's extreme to me, death. And I see it firsthand and this is a call to not be a statistic and i'm telling you it's possible like my mentor my spiritual and physical mentor has helped me over the years he's 80 years old his name is enoch he can still bench press 250 pounds run circles around my kids he's on zero medications he's the one who's turned me on to a lot of this natural stuff and and i see older people thrive and we could talk about the blue zones all day long if you not look them up on the on youtube blue zones we have the ability i believe it's our god-given right our bodies will regenerate under the right environment we just have to do our part and so it is a very extreme mentality, but you know what? The opposite is very extreme. And I'm so, I'm so heartbroken of the people that are suffering mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and they're numbing themselves. And that's exactly what pharmaceuticals do. There's no root cause resolution. And I'd rather someone be on a pharmaceutical than take their life. Let's point that out. But you shouldn't have to be on Xanax or an antidepressant medication for the rest of your life. Like that's just going to numb your whole experience where you're not going to really be able to fulfill life. And that's what this is about. You know, I don't want you to be on opioids the rest of your life. I know Dr. Yoni doesn't either. There's freedom. There's freedom from all of that. And it is truly taking an extreme measure. And so take it for what it is. Start small. Get the quick wins that you need to get. Let, let's fix pain something usually pretty quick to fix, by the way. Let's fix the pain quick. Let's do the exercises. Let's do the mind-body strategies. Let's minimize your toxins. Let's get you to the point where you want to feel good again. Because once you start feeling good again, you're like, wow, what was life like before? I had to drink a pot of coffee just to get through the day. What was like before? I had to have five Advil just to play with my grandkids. That's your possibility right now. And so being a little extreme of the things that you know are good, I would encourage you with that. Get on this elimination lifestyle. Just, just try, try to eliminate some of these things and just see how your body responds. And doc, it's fascinating. We just recommend people just to stop with the fragrances and the bad body cares and the cleaning products. And they start telling us, they start losing weight because their metabolism is functioning better now. And they start getting, I mean, like their, their pain start their pain relief is just skyrocketing because it's like they're not in this chronic inflammatory response and they didn't do anything let alone exercises and and body work or anything they just minimize toxins and their body started to heal mm -hmm. okay that's a really cool you know american no effort approach to something let alone get to the gym and do all this other stuff well let's so, get into that approach yeah. dr zelinsky so you're yeah. talking about you're talking about removing fragrances as an easy entry level step yeah. into this so get the the what is it called glade the little glade plug-in things get those out of the house 
If you, if you like to have scents in your house, you already gave us some uh, kind of spectrum from relaxation with lavender type stuff to the woods for the middle of the day for focus and concentration. And then the energizing was orange and peppermint. So we have a spectrum of options there. What are some other ways that people are introducing toxins to their bodies besides the fragrances and the padding underneath carpet and, and um, yeah. like that? Yeah, let's talk about cleaning and body care. And one thing I want everyone to consider twice is ever to use store-bought hand sanitizer again. Okay. That is public enemy no number one. And many hand sanitizers, uh, hand sanitizers have either triclosan or a triclocarbon-based ingredient. And triclosan, if you didn't know this, who does, right? But I do because it like hit me when I was researching it since 1969 was a registered pesticide. Um Think about that. You're, you're putting a registered pesticide in your on your skin all day long. And a lot of people, because of the 2020 health crisis, they become addicted. Literally, it's an addiction. Like every time they touch a hand knob or uh, a door handle or something, they're like always hand sanitizing, like all the time. They, like it's actually in America, it's, it's a core school supply, at least where we live in Georgia, like paper, pencils, crayons, hand sanitizer. You can't send your kid to school without hand sanitizer. Wow. That's... Uh, that's the mind blowing experience that we're living in. Mm -hmm. And it's just not the hand sanitizer. It's just not the, it's just not the, the trickle sand. It's the other, it's the alcohol. It's the drying content. So essentially what hand sanitizer does, it leads to a condition known as leaky skin. Mm -hmm. And many of you, I'm sure have heard of leaky gut. It's when the tight junctions in your gut lining become slightly um, separated because of uh, bad foods or stress, essentially inflammation, and then it allows proteins and chemicals to seep through the gut lining to your bloodstream, right? Um, but there's a microbiome. I mean, the primary microbiome in your body is not in the gut, it's the skin. Yes. I mean, your skin is your first layer of your immune system. So think of this as the front lines, as the infiltrate, as the, like, this is the war, right? Inhaling something is secondary. It, it's touch, it's skin, you know, getting injected or penetrating your skin, that, that's a deeper level, but the skin is designed to, pre to prevent that. And so most chemicals and most toxins interact with the skin and the skin's supposed to be a protective layer. And if intact, you'll have minimal toxins seep through. But a problem is a lot of people, because of the drying, the dehydrating quality of the hand sanitizers and a lot of the water-based products that they use, their skin is, not, it's visibly cracked, but there are micro slits in the skin like there are micro slits in the, in the gut. And so it leads to something called leaky skin. Look it up. It's, it's like dermatologists talk about this stuff. It's like, why are more people talking about it? And what happens is more chemicals are now seeping through the skin and you're exposing yourself to pathogens. Now, here's a crazy study that I stumbled upon. And it was, this was from an Oxford University journal. Um, they evaluated 180 countries, like virtually every country on the planet that had decent amount of people in, right? Not Antarctica. And they found a direct linear relationship with the amount of sanitation sanitation in the word, not cleanliness, but key. The word sanitation, the amount of sanitation in the country and the rates of Alzheimer's. And the more sanitized a country was, the higher the rates of Alzheimer's. Yeah. Now, we use that word very carefully in my house, in my lifestyle, in my books and things to explain sanitization is not clean. I mean, sanitization essentially is, is the antibiotic approach to cleaning. It's like, there's nothing, it kills everything. Yes. Yeah, so right. The antibiotic approach, right? It's infecting is what it's doing. It's, 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 it's stripping away everything, everything. And you know what? Here's the thing. The researchers explained that the amount of what's happened according to these, again, this is Oxford university journal press. Like this is, this isn't some, you know, hippie essential oil, Dr. Z guy in Atlanta, you know, in, in the woods, forest bathing. Like, this, you know what I mean? I love saying this stuff because it's, like legit researchers from legit people. Um, Cause that's what, we, that's always the criticism to uh, people like us. It's like, oh, well, you know, you're not, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, look, okay. What they're surmising is the lack of healthy bacteria on the skin has led to neurological inflammation in the brain. Yeah, very And that's what happens. 
to us when we are constantly infiltrating ourselves and stripping our body. So what does that mean? Your antibacterial soaps, throw away. Yeah. Your hand sanitizer, throw away. Because you want healthy bacteria. Mm -hmm. Just like how, if you're spending, think about this, you're spending money on a probiotic for crying out loud to put good bacteria in your stomach. Like that's ridiculous. Sure. I mean, really to think we need to spend money on putting bacteria in our gut because we've killed our gut bacteria. We were doing that hundred years ago. That's the state of how backwards things are nowadays. You're not, you're not probiotic. You're not like probiotic pill deficient. You're like, you're not, you're not, you know what I mean? You're not vitamin D supplement deficient. You might be vitamin D deficient. Get some sun, yes. right? There's like the more natural way of looking at this. So we need to incorporate good, healthy bacteria. Mm -hmm. And that allows you, affords you a little bit of, being dirty a little bit sometimes like the best yeah. thing in the world is to go into the garden yeah yeah, yeah. And you so know what? there's research showing uh, among kids that kids who grow up with siblings kids who grow up with pets yep. they have way less allergies yes way farmers less. kids we all heard it right farmers yeah. kids homesteaders kids have the strongest healthiest immune systems yeah yeah so that's exactly what you're talking about there but but the skin. yeah so it's it's the one hand it's it's getting rid of the hand sanitizer getting Stop sterilizing your skin and introducing this this leaky yeah. skin situation. Stop stripping off the 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 bacteria off of your skin with every soaping and every shower and bath. Because one of the main ingredients in those soaps and body washes is a garage degreaser, sodium lauryl sulfate. Correct? Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah, all of them. Yeah. You have the parabens. You got the phthalates. You got the sodium lauryl sulfates and sulfites, and you got talc. You got I mean, so mineral oil, they have so many different things that have a direct neurological or cancer causing effect. I mean, it's just like the researcher is the research is there on all these primary ingredients. And you also will see artificial fragrance or the pseudonym is parfum. Mm -hmm. That's it's parfum. So if you're looking at your stuff and you see, ooh, sodium laurel, uh, Dr. Yoni just mentioned that. Oh, parfum, Dr. Z just mentioned that. Throw that away. Like it, Ooh, it, yeah, it, yeah. It's not even worth giving away. It's like yeah. trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, is there an uh, essential oil alternative to the hand sanitizer? Because I know a lot of people are hooked on that. Can yeah. you recommend a product, yeah. or can people make one themselves? And and if so, would you? Yeah, it's so easy. Yeah, it's so easy. And and by the way, if you want the direct recipe, go to my website. It's there for free. Naturallivingfamily.com. dot awesome. um, It's it's. Um, it's a high proof grade alcohol, depending on where you live. I know in America, we have Everclear. We have really high proof, like 180 plus proof. Some, if you live in Canada, you can't get that stuff. The highest proof alcohol that you could get. And it's essentially, you know, the high proof, the organic grain alcohol with essential oils. You could put a little bit of water or witch hazel. You can put a little bit of aloe in there, a little bit of vitamin E, um, but it's a real basic alcohol-based content that will kill. Here's the cool thing about essential oils. Essential oils have what's known as cell selectivity. It's it's like a sniper approach versus the nuclear bomb. We've talked about the antibiotic and the antibacterial um, hand soaps. Like that kills all good and bad bacteria inside and out. What essential oils do, they literally will leave the good bacteria alone. It's just nature. It's just design. And it's wonderful. And there's no explanation other than the science literally calls it cell selectivity. So the essential oils will target the pathogenic bacteria, viruses, fungi, leaving the healthy ones alone. And so you could use virtually any essential oil. And it's just a matter of what are you trying to accomplish? Going back to the blends and the diffuser, same thing. So oh, awesome. maybe don't put la lavender and vetiver in a hand sanitizer and throw it at your kid and expect your kid to do well on their test at school. <laughs> maybe use a hand. No, really. Like, oh, so I, for I us, believe it. It's, it's just, it's interesting because we're going back to that same spectrum that we talked about earlier. Yeah. So if we just yeah. use it for me, I, I don't know a lot about essential oils. So we have the spectrum with lavender on one end and orange yeah. at the far end of, and peppermint on the, on the far opposite end. Mm -hmm. So we're combining Almost any essential oil or any essential oil with a high proof alcohol and, and aloe and, and aloe. Oh, yeah. aloe the, I mean, again, you want to reach, you want to have good, healthy that? skin. We love aloe, aloe vera gel, vitamin E, vitamin A, okay. um, witch hazel. All these are good skin health ingredients that can help. You know, we just, even using this too much will dry your skin and we don't want to do it. And that's, a, and that's a point. The only time I'm using this really is when I'm on a road trip and I just changed a poopy diaper in a rest stop. <laughs> sure. I don't use it. Yeah, no, yeah. really, I don't use it. I don't need it. 
Yeah. And that's the mentality. Like 20 years ago, before hand sanitizer was a thing, we did okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think about it. We did okay. I no, mean, I, I, we I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't use it at all. I, I, I never use it. Right. So I'm with but you. You're, you're, you're in a pinch. I got, I've been in the pinch and, yeah. and that, that's a pinch. That's sure. my litmus test. Poopy diaper on a road trip. Sure. But I want to encourage you to wash your hands with soap yeah. and, and get back to those basics. And really I'm speaking to someone here and maybe yeah. a loved one, but people are literally addicted to it. It's a habitual OCD. Yes. And so it's all the time. Like so Give us an alternative yep. for soap. Do you make your own or do you buy do you buy something in yeah. the store? Like we use oh, uh, yeah. Dr. Bronner's here at the house. Yeah, yeah. I love, yeah. See, Dr. Bronner's Castile soap is this, um, a mainstay. We make our own liquid hand soap and it's so easy. You get one of those foaming pumpers if you like the foaming aspect of it. But yeah, Dr. Bronner's with a little bit of water and essential oils. Again, a little bit of aloe, a little bit of vitamin E. It's, it's a lot of the same recipe. Essentially, you just don't have any alcohol in this because you're not you're not trying to be over in killing bacteria or viruses or anything. It's not like a hand sanitizer approach, uh, but Dr. Bronner's is great. And you make a good point though, too. Um, we have six kids, right? And we're really involved with life around us. Um, we have our hobbies. We have a lot of great things and involved in church and local things. And so we admittedly don't make everything. We do a lot. And my wife's a master at that. So we have a little phrase, when you can't DIY, what do you do? Like you find a company that you can trust. And so that's the thing about getting into this lifestyle. And you'll see, we have a bunch of product recommendations on my site, or you go to your natural living um, or your natural health food store local, and you see what is available, your shampoo, your toothpaste. Um, again, Dr. Browner's is, is one of my favorites, a little on the pricier side. And that's the other thing too. We don't want people like, oh man, I got to like get a second job to pay for this stuff. Like if you make your own, you will save hundreds, if not a thousand plus dollars a year. Like you will save a ton of money just by making your own stuff. Yeah, but one if thing you that I would buy it on the Dr. Bronner's is that it's very concentrated. So when you buy a yeah. gallon size, yeah. you're supposed to dilute it to like 50 50 with uh, at least 50 50 with water and soap uh, for mm -hmm. using for general hand washing. And you can even go, I think, two thirds water and it's still extremely effective. Yeah. And everything laundry detergent, yeah. um, shampoo, conditioner. My wife has a great like curl detangling spray like stuff yeah. there's a solution for everything so the thing is i guess a practical thing you know it's helpful if you're not doing this alone like what's really helpful is you have friends that are crazy like us and crazy like you like hey let's have a you know hey if essential oil people can have like an essential oil party and talk about oils and sell them why can't you have a diy party like hey one person brings this you bring that you get together like we trade, like, hey, I got a bunch of soap. You got some laundry detergent. Like it's no different than bartering eggs for, for bacon. I mean, it's just this lifestyle where we want to encourage people to be part of a community and try to find one. And again, I always go back to the natural food store because these are the the, the hardcore people in your local area, tip, typically speaking. Again, not Whole Foods, not the big ones, but like the local ones. Like they're the epicenter sure. for a lot of this stuff. And we've learned so much from these people, but the community that they've created Oftentimes they have community group postings and they have meetups and stuff, but yeah. just know you're not alone. And if you have a friend or a couple, a family member, a loved one that you could do this with, great. Yeah. If not, then chip away one at a time. And and like we we mentioned a number of different things. And again, I, I literally have every re recipe that you would want to be able to start practicing with on my website. Um, we have eBooks and all kinds of different things if you're interested, but you get started. You get started with a couple things. You make that part of your routine. And then you, after a while, you get used to it. Now you add another thing to your routine. It's no different than, than you know, starting an exercise regimen or gardening. You, you just have to fit it in, in a way that's comfortable. And hopefully something that you enjoy. If it's a chore, it's not going to last. If you don't see results, you're going to quit. And so that's real. Like you want to see results. You want to feel better. And so trust me on this, the biggest bang for your buck is the fragrances, your hand sanitizers and your soaps. That's the easiest, quickest, cheapest stuff to, to, to change. Like super quick, super cheap, super easy. The other stuff is a little more advanced, like shea butters and whatever. Like it's fun, but it takes more time and energy. And let, let's do the easy stuff first. And then you hopefully will get the confidence that you can do all things, right? And then one by one by one. Very well said. 
Thank you so much for coming on. Where can people find out about the recipes that you shared with us today? You said they're available for free on your site. Would you mind sharing the site? Yeah, yeah. It's naturallivingfamily.com. Naturallivingfamily.com. I'll put a link for that in the description Thanks. below. And uh, where can people find out more about you? Yeah, our website. And you know, feel free. Um, the Healing Power of Essential Oils book behind me is a bestseller on Amazon or anywhere where your books are sold locally, check it out. If you're interested in learning more about essential oils, we have all the basic recipes in there, plus sections on kids and pets and all kinds of stuff. So that'd be a good place if you want to learn more. And um, yeah, Google me online, a lot of different interviews and things that we've done over the years, but I want to thank you doc for having me. And uh, I, you know, we kind of glossed over it and I, I feel that it's, I don't want to be a disservice to your community. Like the, this is so important for people that, that are in pain. Like I can't begin to stress. This could be that missing piece to your, what we call natural living protocol. It's so subtle, but this is like long, this will help. And I think it's necessary in your long-term pain-free lifestyle and don't take it for granted. And once you stop that you know, death by a thousand cuts from these toxins. And once you reduce that inflammatory response, you'll see your motion and your lifestyle, your joints and everything just functioning better. And like, wow, you'll, you'll wake up one day forgetting what it's like to be in pain. And that's a good place to be. If you'd like to get more helpful tips and simple strategies for non-toxic living, check out Dr. Zelinsky's website. I'll put a link for that in the description down below. Beyond that, I just want to thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button before you head out of here, and I'll see you next time.